something that you have to do every week in clinical. And also when you get out into practice, it's going to be something that you're going to have to do every week. And important treatment decisions are based on what our assessments are. Until now, you know, it's been kind of a hodgepodge thing, students learning lung sounds. It's been, if you've been lucky enough to be with another RN who was hearing something abnormal, or if your instructor was available on a given time when you were doing your assessment, that's when you eventually learned how to do it. We've been lucky enough that the company who makes a CAI that we have in the lab has allowed us permission to rip those particular sounds on the CAI onto discs for you to learn from and for you to test on. So it's the first time in a long time that we're all going to start on the same baseline. How you will do this, and you're probably wondering how the heck are we going to perfect this skill. We have a CAI in the lab, and there will be directions there as far as your access to it. Okay? It's accessible on the computer labs and in the library. And the name of it is Percussion and Auscultation. And there will be um, directions as far as how you're going to access that. So that is your first step in this process. We want you to watch that CAI very carefully and slowly and take notes as you go along. For each, bless you, for each type of lung sound, take notes as to what the characteristics of are of those lung sounds. Okay? That's step one. Then step two, practice, practice, practice listening to them and getting so that you can tell what they are. And how you are going to do that is these sounds will be, there will be CDs in the back lab supply room. And they are student CDs. The sounds will be labeled one through six, I think it is, on the CD. You can put them into a CD player that will also be there for your use to practice with. There's multiple CD players. You put them in here. There will be double headphones, and you can practice with a partner. The partner can play a particular sound for you, and you can give it your best guess as to what you're hearing. After you do it for a bit, I really think you're going to find that it's not that difficult. My husband knew them by the end of the evening when I was making all these CDs. He could tell me exactly what he was hearing. Another place that you can practice is on the computers in the lab. There will be a C the same CDs in the back room. You can put into the CD drive of the computer. And with a partner, both of you have on headphones, the partner plays a track and you tell your partner what you believe that sound is. So this is the main component of this uh, comp that's different than Nursing 100. In Nursing 100, you learned how to do an entire full body assessment, only one component of it was the lung assessment. You're really not doing anything different for this comp. Other, you know, you're doing the full lung assessment, but now we're incorporating you trying to identify what the specific sounds are. So first of all, you're going to access the CAI, you're going to take notes, you're going to practice, practice, practice listening to those sounds. Now these sounds are the exact same sounds that you will be tested on, okay? In the clinical area, it's kind of difficult because somebody's crackles may not sound quite the same as another person's crackles. So there's no iffies here. It's the same exact sounds that you're being tested on that you are supposedly practicing on, okay? Uh, the next thing you can do is practice with a partner doing a full, not full, but a focused respiratory assessment. Okay? If you look on your teaching learning guidelines, it goes through the steps of a full focused assessment. When you come in for testing, you will get, you will pick, you know how we always have you pick cards. You will pick a scenario card. And Jean and I thought it would be helpful if we ran through a practice testing scenario for you so you kind of have it in your heads what we're going to be asking of you. So in this case, we have a 50-year-old woman who has <laughs> exacerbation. 
of COPD. And a card will tell you how much oxygen this woman has on. So please note, the orders include two liters of O2 via nasal cannula. Okay, so we know she's got exacerbation of COPD and you know that she's supposed to have O2 on <coughs> via your nasal cannula. When you come in, first of all, here's my stuff, you need to have all your equipment with you to do a respiratory assessment. You need a watch, you need your stethoscope, right? Mm -hmm. And you need an oximetry, whatever they are. What are they called? Pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry. Yes, you need one of these things. Okay. Good morning, Mrs. DeBracci. My name is Mary Coriel. I'm your FLCC nursing student. I was assigned to work with your RA today to deliver your care. How are you today? You're not the same nurse that was here yesterday. No, I'm not. That might have been a Bosey student. But we're here today till 3 o'clock this afternoon. You're looking like you're having a hard time breathing today. Listen, it, you just do what you have to do and, and then, you know, get out because the price is right is coming on. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to watch that. It would be all right if I take a listen to your lungs and do a pulse ox on you this morning? I, I'd like somebody to listen to my lungs. Okay. Now, what could I see just by walking in the room? She's stooped over. You can see that she's breathing, stooped over the desk. She's having a hard time breathing. How would you describe the way she's speaking? She's broken for a yeah, she can't say more than three or four words at a time without having to pause and breathe. So that's significant in your documentation too. I'm looking at her and I see now when at testing, we will tell you what you see. For instance, when you come in and test with us, say I'm looking at her now and I'm checking out her lips. We will say to you what they are, whether they're slightly cyanotic or cyanotic. We will tell you. So I'm going to say today, her lips are slightly cyanotic. When you walk into the room and somebody has nasal low 2 on, we know that the order is for 2. So we're going to look up at the wall, make sure that it is indeed on, and that the prongs are in her nose correctly. Okay? Does sitting up help you to breathe a little bit better? You know, I, I think it does. I kind of figured that's why you were sitting up here in the chair here today. I guess today. I didn't realize I was like this. I just did it. Okay. Well, for starters, I'm going to take your pulse ox reading here. And I'm taking her hand and I'm checking her capillary refill. I mean, we don't have to go around the block here. I already have her hand in my hand. Now, when you take a pulse ox on either Jean or I, because we're the testers, you know hopefully it's going to come out normal. But we are going to tell you to pretend what the reading is. And I'm going to say that her reading is 92. Now, for somebody with COPD, is 92 okay? Yes. It is. But you have to look at the person here, too. Isn't she working very hard to maintain that 92? So you have to kind of take that into consideration also. Now I'd like to listen to your lung sounds. When you come in for testing, you'll have your stethoscope on but the earbuds won't be in your ears. You're gonna put on a set of headphones and your instructor will have a set of headphones. And as you are listening to the lungs, she's gonna change, or I will change, what you're hearing when you're doing this assessment. All right? And if you could turn around here. Oh, that's wonderful, you did it right in the chair for me. Now, if you look at this picture here, you can see that on the back, the predominant place is the left and right lower lung fields. So almost anything you hear on the back, with the exception of it being pretty up high here, is going to be left and right lower lung fields. Okay? I think pro probably a good number of you are under, you know, a different impression of that. But the, pretty much the whole thing are considered lower lung fields. And this is the one that I need to make a better picture on for tomorrow. Can, you take, can I ask one quick question? This yes. picture we do have, it's circled from the outside. Mm -hmm. Would it be one and two, is, or would two be lower, or two be in the higher? Two would probably it be at lower. Okay. Okay? Okay. When, the important thing when you're auscultating breath sounds is that you're comparing side to side. 
Now, do you think we give a hoop whether you start at the bottom and go up? No, we don't care. You can start at the top and go down, you can start at the bottom and go up, as long as you consistently are comparing side to side. What's another thing you learned in 101 that's important about listening to breath sounds? Lift up. You've got to have it next to the skin. Now, Jean and I jointly decided we don't want everybody touching our skin here, so we will wear a gown, and when you are touching our clothing underneath this gown, you're going to say, I'm touching the skin. Okay? That's a little too much for us. <laughs> so we're comparing side to side. We're having direct skin contact, and what else? Full inspiration and expiration. A full inspiration and expiration. You might want to ask them to breathe slowly and deeply through their mouth, right? But what do you have to be careful of? Isn't one of my students here that we had some trouble in clinical? Probably hyperventilating. Yeah, we had somebody pass out on us, and we thought that the person was <laughs> oh, And it's because they were doing breath sounds at the time. I was waiting for Gene to start. <laughs> doing breath sounds at the time and it just went on so long and sometimes like when you're hearing fine crackles or at normal sounds it may take you two or three breath cycles to really come to a decision as far as what you're hearing so just give them a rest every now and then if it's taking you a long time to ascertain what you're hearing okay so you will have the headphones on your instructor will have the headphones on and then you will start listening to lung sounds. And I'm going to start up at the top. Hmm. We should have sounds. Now, these sound very loud, and you might think, how the heck am I going to know what that is? But once you get there, you're much better on the headphones, okay? We're going to ignore that. Let's go back. Okay. Now, now. My AD. And your patient's mouth is open. Thank you. Taking some nice, slow, deep breaths. Doesn't that sound like a cold winter well, night? Well. <laughs> what that is, our rock guy. It sounds like a cold winter night and the wind going through my wires that bring the satellite to the house. That's what it sounds like. Now can you see how I'm going side to side? Keep going. Not you say on expiration I hear wrong thing. The only one where we are interested in knowing whether it's inspiratory or expiratory are wheezes. Just play them a wheeze for the heck of it. Uh, okay. okay. Here are we. Yes. Yeah. Hear that musical quality? And you, when you listen to a few, you can tell whether it's inspiratory or expiratory. G and I will try to coordinate our breathing with whether it's inspiratory or expiratory. We may not be too hot the first couple times around, but we are practicing. Now, will it be manipulated so that you have to determine left or right or where? Yes. So we will be switching the sounds depending on where you are so in the lung. So you'll like co like coach us to locate your nano. So you're not going to be able to switch it as fast as we're going to. Well, I'm hoping you're not going to go too fast. Okay, I mean, so if you're starting up here, I know you're moving down. And if I'm going to have something in the bases, I know that I've got to change to that track by the time you get down to the bases. Oh, okay. And you can't okay. move your stethoscope until the patient has had a full inspiratory cycle, which right. means in and out. So you can't go whip, whip, whip. Right. I, mean, yes. I mean, even a person who's tachypenic doesn't breathe that. Right. But, but, but let's say we've listened to one and we're not positive we want to listen. You one. keep going. I'm not changing anything until you move down. It's hard until I indicate and say, okay, we can move on or something. So well, once I see, you know, you're going like this, right? Down the chest wall. We know what we want to have where as far as breath sounds. Some of them may be diffuse all over. Some may be just in the bases, the base of the um, left upper lobe, okay, or the lower half of the left upper lobe, okay? That's the way that you can document these things because 
Otherwise, you'd be referring to the whole chest. If you can say lower half of something, or diffuse, if you hear something all over that lobe, say like wheezes tend to be diffuse. Remember with wheezes, sometimes you may hear, have you ever had this happen to you? And you go to your instructor and you say, oh, I'm so excited, I finally heard a wheeze, and then the instructor goes in and there's no wheeze. Because they, well, they can come and go with people too. Yeah, or maybe they've had a treatment since you've been in the room. All right, so we've gone through the back. Bum, 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 bum. Then we're gonna go to this side but you have to compare it with the like area on the other side, right? And once we're getting around the edges here, if you look at your numbers on the picture, you can see how, for instance, you get to the bottom. Then you go out to the side and you've got to jump over to the same level on the other side. Then down, and then you're going to jump over, okay? So that you're comparing the two different sides. So it might be helpful for you when you get this picture that's up there tomorrow to try to map out on your chest where these things are because it gives you landmarks to go by. First of all, which lung has got three lobes? That's right. And that's one of the reasons why we thought this would be an excellent comp for you because we've had students say left middle lobe. Well, left there is no middle lobe. So we thought this would give you a better handle on landmarks and um, lung anatomy. If you look at the lungs, they're not split out like jello, you know, different color jellos that you can layer in a nice champagne glass. They're, they're oblique. They're sort of at a slant, the way that the different lobes are divided. Okay, let's do the front. Okay. So, Mary, can you say where you're at when you left your stuff? Excuse me? She's breathing right with it. Get that sink here. She's going to pass out on me. <laughs> Rest a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right middle lobe. So you would really, it's only a small little slice down around here that's the right middle lobe. Yep. After your assessment, we, excuse me, we're not concerned that you differentiate the left upper from the right lower. We, we, no. We want to know what sounds are you hearing? And it, are, the, are those sounds the same on the right that they are on the left? Are they the same anteriorly as they are posteriorly? That's what we're interested in. I did have a student once who wrote about the right middle lobe, and I said to her, I have been in this business forever, and I have never been able to say 100% for sure that I know where that right middle lobe is. It's just, it's a small wedge. Don't, don't bother with that. What you're saying is, is it on the right side? Is it in the middle? Is it in the up? Is it in the lower? That's what you need to say. What is the sound that you're hearing? That's what we want you folks to be able to identify. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, yes, what? We, what? <laughs> I got out of character, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> After you've done your assessment, then you've got to document your note. And if you look at your teaching learning guidelines where it says conduct a focused respiratory assessment, assessment, see all these things that are included in the respiratory assessment, such as Patient's orientation, what did we say about her orientation? She's orientated. Seems to be orientated to time, place, and person. She knew who her nurse was yesterday. Um, she knows that the price is right is coming on. Um, color of mucous membranes, nail beds, and skin. You would note those things, and somewhere during your assessment, you've got to verbalize that you're looking at these things while you're there. Determine capillary refill, we've done that, and we will tell you what you're seeing, you know, pretend you're seeing. Uh, respiratory status, pattern, depth, ease, rate, and rhythm. That's why you would have needed a watch, but we will tell you what the rate is, because our rate, hopefully, will be fairly normal. 
cough. I didn't ask you about a cough, Mrs. DeBrine. Did you have a cough this morning? <coughs> How would you describe that cough? All right. Yeah. It, are you bringing anything up with that cough? You know, everybody always asks me that, and I am. And I don't know why I look at it, because everybody says, what color is it? So <laughs> it's green and it's yellow. Okay, thank and you. I'm tired of it. <laughs> I might be tired of you being here too. <laughs> I mean, hmm. Oximetry results, we have already we would have told you what those were. And O2 rate and flow. Yeah. Can we be writing little notes as we do this? No, why not? You do it when you're in a room normally, you write down what you see and what you do. Yes. The question was, can she write down little notes? When you're taking vital signs and you're in a room, you write them down, correct? So that would be okay to do too. Just don't come in with a menu of what you're going to ask her. <laughs> uh, when you're done, we're going to ask you to document your assessment. And we may explore with you, if something is amiss, what would you think you would do in this case? For instance, if you walked into the room and your scenario said she's supposed to be an O2 and two liters and it's really up to four. Or it's if the set pillow. Yeah. If the sats are very low, things, yeah, we would ask you just to brainstorm what do you think you would do in this scenario if these things presented themselves. Okay, any questions? You've all got your weeks that you're being tested on. On my sheet, they are in green. Those are the assessment times that I put aside. If they don't work for you, let me know. Gene, you're doing it individual.